while the British were ruling the subcontinent, the Indian people and their political figures made the mistake of not building enough relationship with one another, and they all tried to build a relationship with the imperial power. So the political parties were the majority were Hindus tried to build a relationship with the British. The political parties, where the majority were Muslims, tried to build relationships with the British. So each group tried to build a special relationship with the empire. So the Indians did not build good enough relations with fellow Indians. So that is one reality to understand. The other thing is that the Muslim minority, as India was approaching independence, felt that if independence comes, and along with that democracy comes, and along with that one person, one vote comes. Then the Hindus being a majority, the Muslims might face persecution at the hands of the Hindu majority. The Hindu majority will remember past history where there were Muslim monarchs ruling a Hindu majority. some kind of discrimination against the Muslims. So this was the political reality. And this was a feeling that led to the demand by some people for a creation of Muslim majority parts of India to be made into a separate country. Now this was not essentially a religious uh, campaign, but it soon acquired a religious uh, aspect. Uh, when some political figures said that Islam was in danger. And this uh, appeal became quite strong and it was uh, well received by some sections. So yes, uh, uh, the religion was very uh, strongly imported into the political discussion. And that uh, created a very deep uh, divide. It created passions on both sides. And as, you, as the world knows, uh, in the end, in 1947, there were great uh, incidents of, of violence and maybe half a million people were killed. Muslims were killed, Hindus were killed, Sikhs were killed. So uh, one can certainly say that the importation of religion into politics at that stage worsened the situation and led to a very great tragedy. I already made this uh, remark about each side trying to build a special relationship with the British rather than building a good relationship with fellow Indians. So that was the, the real tragedy. When a section of a population feels aggrieved or disappointed, uh, if those, those problems are not addressed in time, then it becomes more difficult later and later and later. So the Indian National Congress, the party with which my grandfather was asso actively associated, Uh, it had many Muslim figures, it had some Muslim leaders also. It was not a Hindu party, but it certainly was a party where the majority were Hindus. And I think one can state that at various points, uh, the International Congress might have been more sensitive to the apprehensions of the Muslim minority and might have 
uh, taken steps to, uh, to meet their genuine grievances. So when the psychological moment was missed, then it became more difficult later on, but equally on, on the other side. There were uh, maybe extreme demands and not a willingness to accept something that could have been an honorable compromise for all. So it was, I would just call it a failure of, of statesmanship really, but also a failure of statesmanship because there were very strong pressures at the grassroots. So there were great pulls, it was not so easy, but some psychological moments were missed. And I have to also say that the British Empire pursued a very vigorous policy of divide and rule and uh, made matters more difficult. And, and because the independence movement, uh, which was aimed at the removal of the British Empire, was, was not taken very well by the British. When uh, uh, the Viceroy in India went to London to for, in 1945-46 uh, and met Churchill, Churchill said to him, make sure that you divide India into three, four, five pieces. Make sure you do that. So, so the imperial power also played an, uh, an unfortunate role. <laughs>